Hello, it's lovely to see you all. My name is Dean. Um, I should start off by saying I'm represented here by a couple of different collaborative projects, the most recent of which is the gigantic book you see on the table called They Said, which is an anthology of collaborative writing. It's fiction, poetry, and nonfiction. It's really interesting, super innovative. Um, I worked on it with Simone Mench, and then also Jackie White and Sally Ashton who worked on it for a couple of years, really, um, through hundreds of submissions, uh, narrowing it down to, well, it's still a lot, it's a big book. And then um, also another collaborative project, this book, Suture, which I'm going to read from, and I'll say a little bit about the book. Um, we worked, I worked on this with Simone Mench, this wonderful poet from Chicago, who proposed this collaborative project. Um, that she was calling the Frankenstein Sonnets. And we worked on this for about two years, and it would go like this. She would send me an email that had three or four lines of poetry, usually from sonnets, and I would pick one of those, and that would become the first line of a new poem. <clears throat> and so if you don't know a sonnet, it's a 14-line poem. It's a Petrarchan version, which has one rhyme scheme, and then the Shakespearean has another rhyme scheme. So the line would become the first line of the poem, I would write three more lines, concluding the first quatrain, and then send it back to Simone. She'd write four lines, concluding the second quatrain, and send it back to me. And then I'd write three lines, and it to her, then she'd write three lines. And then I would start <clears throat> with the next poem. So every poem has three voices. The poet whose work we stole, um, and then our own. So we started calling these the Frankenstein sonnets because it was a suturing of the old and the new, and in some cases, the living and the dead. So here are some, oh, and whoever started the poem off would sort of establish the rhyme scheme if there was one, metrical pattern. You would often try to trick the other, I think he said that stanza. <clears throat> this is a poem called, Are You Having a Good Time? And uh, so the title of each poem is the first line of the poem. This is a, comes from a line by Reed Dove. Are you having a good time? Are you storm-struck or sunbeam? A floral or a dapple, a painting or a stain? Do you err on the side of blunder or brutal belief? Are you bored, blanched, are you broken? Are you the tunnel at the end of the light? Can I hold your coat or take your shoes? Can I ask you about your pants? Do you bite? Would you prefer to die in crossfire or suicide? Do you take lemon in your tea? While screwing, would you opt for carpeted floor or marble countertop? Do you like my knees? The bird of the tree, which one gets to live? This poem is burning. Which word do you say? Mm -hmm. I didn't write the screwing line. So. <laughs> <laughs> the dirty lines are some oaks in this, in this book. Um, this is a poem I like a lot called I Was Footwork and Firework in One, but the line is from Les Murray. I was footwork and firework in one. You were plumage and pyre, flame and field. You were bone break and line break and tire. I was pitchfork and anvil, notch and main. We were toxin and tonic, composite. We were wormwood and rosebud and wilt and spill. We were trigger and target and force. We were footnote and keynote. Even if the clock's candle burns us back into the dark, we will one day blaze up into our name. And even if the gun barrel of history long in our throats will flare bright as burning labyrinth trees, even our poison will light the world's debris. <clears throat> this is a poem whose first line is from uh, Audrey and Rich. This is a poem. Uh, uh, what about this? Is this better? Yeah. Sorry. I'm so tall that the, the hunching. I'm gonna see if I can do this. How's that? Yeah. It's been great seeing you guys. I'm gonna go sit down. This is from Audrey and Rich, the great American poet. It will not be simple, it will not be long, though we lean into shadow. 
We can still flame the body by sun and by tongue as light slams against our loosening frame. Light only tells us so much about how things open and close. There isn't much we haven't imagined, but we have forgotten most of it. Sure, we want to burn, but how? How do we turn a summer dress to blue-edged flame in elegiac fields? How do we remain glistening when this absent-minded weather empties us of utterance? How do we go about being emptied of our emptiness? How do we burn but be? All right, two more. Um, this is from a, a line from a C.K. Williams poem. Near dusk, near a path, near a brook, near a minnow, near a ripple, near a rock, the snowy anatomy of a horse skeleton erodes into nothingness. All that moved was the rake of the late lag on the fall and fold of a long field. What if, just once, the night pulled back its hood to start its dark climb, it rose the dead. What if we waited, grief eddying inside our chests, for ghosts to rise and recognize us, but all that rose were streams. Were stars what gods gave up to come down among the mortals? Near love, near beauty, near wars. Or are stars night's notes to skin's silent song. Thanks for coming out. Thanks to Black Lawrence Press. Thanks to all the other great readers. You're in for a real treat. Um, this is a great lineup. Um, <clears throat> this is one of my favorites in the book. Um, the line is from Gerard Manley Hopkins. Um, I think the poem does a pretty good job of channeling um, Hopkins is Hopkinness. <laughs> the descending blue, that blue is all in a rush. Like an arrow of blue blown back, blown through, like a black of blue, a blear, a bleed, a crush of blue. Now you, bend the bow, make it true into the blackest bullseye, midnight dipped into pitch, this darkening iris, glossy and filled with augury, like a black-tipped fin cutting the sea into blue foam frenzy. Oh, to fall through to flux, to dive deep into the hive, the honey of blood's blue buzz, wave upon wave, wing upon wing, to live lost in the swim and soar of love's last blue. The final blue line cannot be deferred. Oh, to swan dive into the drowse and blur. Thank you.